early October, near Wypress, Alberta. The Canadian Association of Geophysical Contractors is shaking things up. Seismic in Motion is the CAGC's premier annual event. This one-day field trip shows all aspects of seismic operations in a single location. Contractors from all aspects of the seismic industry come together and donate their time, people and resources to educate students, government, potential employees and the public on what the seismic industry does. Safety on such an interactive field trip is paramount. Participants are bussed in from Calgary and provided with full personal protective equipment. equipment your hard hat. Groups are made and assigned a safety coordinator who then briefs them on potential hazards of the area. The seismic industry's purpose is to map the subsurface of the earth to aid in the discovery of fossil fuels. Energy sources such as explosives are utilized to generate seismic waves that are then recorded by highly sensitive equipment. The resulting data is then used to guide oil and gas companies in extraction procedures. I'm on the spot. <laughs> One of the major goals of Seismic in Motion is to show just how far the industry has come in terms of health, safety and environmental concerns, all of which have evolved a great deal over the decades. In the past, health, safety and environmental considerations were not key components of a seismic operation. But now, through innovation and investment, the industry has developed equipment and techniques that have significantly reduced the seismic footprint on the land and make seismic the safest discipline in oil and gas. One of the first steps of on-the-ground seismic operations is the survey. Before the advent of GPS, surveyors had to establish optical sight lines. This resulted in very long and straight cut lines through forested areas. The areas where we work have a rich diversity of wildlife and sensitive habitat, including lands frequented by endangered species. Although we are committed to working in an environmentally responsible manner everywhere, we take extra care in these sensitive areas. Another critical early step of any project is an assessment of the environmental issues that might come up while operations are underway. In conjunction with local, provincial and federal information sources, we identify any sensitive habitats or wildlife that could potentially be affected by the project. Special attention is paid to the placement of water body crossings and nesting fowl habitats. Using advanced digital equipment such as GPS, surveyors locate and mark off areas to avoid entirely, such as sensitive wildlife habitat. They also mark buffer zones around utility and transportation corridors and designate no machine entry zones, requiring that all entry to such areas be on foot only. The surveyed lines are then cleared through forested areas to allow access by equipment and personnel. In the past, bulldozers were utilized to clear long, wide swaths, and because of the extensive damage to the soil they caused, many are still visible today. Wildlife may be reluctant to cross these open spaces, as it leaves them visible to predators. Modern line cutting techniques minimize the long-term environmental impact by laying out lines in narrow meandering configurations, sometimes made by personnel only on foot utilizing chainsaws. Any brush or small trees that have to be removed are laid flat and cut up. 
Modern hand cutting crews are highly trained and equipped with plenty of safety gear. A big change from 30 years ago. On lines that require adequate space for equipment, mulchers are utilized to clear the lines. These low ground pressure machines keep the duff layer intact and leave behind only a biodegradable mulch. Unlike the heavy equipment of the past, these machines can meander a path less than three meters wide and do not damage trees along the edge of the line. Because there are no windrows of debris or long sight lines for predators, impact to wildlife is minimal. After one or two growing seasons, these modern cut lines are no longer visible. The next phase in seismic is the placement of the required energy sources. A variety of drills are used to produce holes less than 16 centimeters wide and 20 meters deep. An explosive charge is then placed down the hole, locked with a special plug, then sealed with drill cuttings and bentonite, a natural clay that prevents the movement of water within the hole. If the hole doesn't seal, the energy is lost in what's called a blowout, a demonstration of which is put on for the sim participants. The large, heavy drills and soil disturbing techniques of the past have been replaced by a wide variety of low impact machines. Modern drilling techniques use the smallest drill possible for the shortest amount of time with the least potential for habitat disturbance. Small, maneuverable tracked drills are used in forested areas where habitat disturbance is a concern. Their low ground pressure ensures they don't easily get stuck and damage to the soil is kept to a minimum. In highly sensitive or steep terrain, Helicopters are used to transport in even smaller, lighter drill rigs that leave behind nothing but drill cuttings and human footprints. Today, with the use of a variety of stable explosives, old-style detonators have largely been replaced with electronic versions that can be tracked for safety and accountability purposes. The astonishing power of explosives is demonstrated to sim participants. One, two, three. All explosives are kept on site in bullet-resistant, static-free magazines that must be checked routinely by personnel. Explosives are transported by GPS-tracked vehicles, and drivers must adhere to strict rules of conduct. Drilling into the ground inevitably causes some impact. But modern techniques allow for small diameter holes, which means less material brought to the surface. Much of these drill cuttings are placed back down the hole, and any leftover material is spread out so it becomes incorporated into the ground surface as quickly as possible. Depending on terrain and other considerations, machines called vibrators can be used instead of explosives to provide the energy source for seismic recording. These machines work by lowering metal plates onto the ground and hydraulically shaking them to produce an energy wave. Though in some cases larger than a drill, they do not require making a hole, which further reduces potential direct impact to the land. These low ground pressure machines are typically used in convoys of three to five machines. The most important phase in a seismic program is the recording of data produced by the energy sources. The seismic waves are picked up by incredibly sensitive devices called geophones that are laid out in arrays over the program. Kilometers of cables used to be laid out by crews in trucks to connect geophones together. To lay out the heavy cabled equipment, wide lines had to be cut for truck access and the work crews. These wide lines created significant disturbance to local wildlife and the environment. With wireless technology now being utilized, 
Lighter bags of equipment can be flown out to small teams of personnel on foot and distributed rapidly, with very little impact on wildlife or ecosystems. Because of their low impact, these geophones can now be left out in the field and monitored over time with the programs reshot year after year, a process called 4D seismic. A truck containing highly specialized equipment is used as a receiving station for all incoming data from the geophones. <laughs> Personnel inside direct, monitor, and troubleshoot the geophone array and schedule the setting off of energy sources, which is demonstrated for the participants. The resulting data is the final product of the seismic industry. It is stored and processed for geophysicists to interpret in their search for hydrocarbons in the oil and gas industry. Like most industries, health, safety, and environmental concerns were not a priority in the past. The absence of safety equipment, little to no regulations regarding transportation, labor hours, and little concern for the environment was the way things were 20 to 30 years ago. Now, seismic programs often contract an environmental monitor to be present during all phases of the operation. Their role is to ensure environmental quality control and provide advice and direction if unforeseen issues crop up. At the end of a program, we want to make sure that there is no trace of our presence left on the land. This means every piece of garbage is picked up and disposed of properly, including drilling and blasting waste, and any other material that wasn't there before. Any soil disturbance that may have occurred is treated through remediation and reseeded to ensure recovery of the land. Safety equipment has become an absolute rule, and medical personnel are always present during all phases as well. Medics often have special equipment fitted for the rough terrain and remote field rescues. Because a lot of our work occurs in remote wilderness, very specialized rescue teams can be called in for incidents that regular medics cannot deal with. In instances where a worker is severely hurt, helicopters can drop medics into an area to assess injuries. Then, if required, evacuate the patient on a long line to a waiting ambulance or even directly to a hospital. Health and safety in the seismic industry is extremely important. All necessary steps are taken to ensure everyone goes home safe. From the disruptive highway-like seismic lines of past decades to today's modern narrow winding trails that disappear in a season or two, the modern environmental policy we strive for each and every day is leave behind only footprints. We have the option either putting them on that gravel bar or putting them in the river. Who wants to see them in the river? They voted the river again. And then lovely Danny. We're going to do a demonstration of a live picnic. You make me nervous. I don't want to be on the outtakes. I like the outtakes.